Wahoo have just released their brand new Element Roam. Now, both the hardware and software have seen updates, and there is a lot to like. There's also a few things which may be slightly disappointing, in my opinion. So be sure to stick around to find out what they are. First up, let's get it unboxed and see what's inside. Now, I'm always a big fan of the Wahoo packaging. It is just very premium and kind of justifies how much money you're spending on one of these products. Uh, but you slide out the insert and then, of course, you're greeted with the computer first. Take out the little insert and then you've got all the goodies underneath. So, first up, we have got the out front mount with the mounting bolt as well. You've got the USB cable. You've got the little stem mount. And then, sadly, you've still got cable ties. They haven't yet moved over to an O-ring system similar to Garmin. And then you've also got your paperwork and quick start guide as well. Now, first up, we're going to have a little look at the computer itself. Now, there's one key feature which stood out to me straight away, and it was a bugbear of the previous version, and that is the buttons. Now, these buttons here are actually raised, which is a huge improvement on the previous computer, which had concave buttons, which not only were they really hard to press, but they could also fill up with water, and they just weren't easy to use, especially when you had gloves on. Now that the buttons are raised, you can really feel them click, and I think that is going to make a really big difference to how people use this computer and interact with it. The next thing is the USB port. Previously, it was micro USB. They've now made the upgrade to USB-C, which really is overdue, to be honest. Um, but it does bring it in line with most other electronic devices out there. On the front, it's still looking exactly the same. You've still got the run of LEDs up the side and across the top. It's a feature that a lot of Wahoo users really enjoy. And you've still got that ambient light sensor in the top corner, which will help control the auto dimmer on the screen. Now this version of the Element does basically resemble the previous one. And when you pop it into the mount itself, it still maintains that pretty sleek looking design. And I think it's something that, you know, it's not gonna be bad looking on the front of your bike because it does look pretty good and integrated, which is nice. It still maintains the little hole and the bolt there so that you can bolt in the computer to the mount itself, which adds a layer of security, but it also means for the bike nerds out there, if you're racing your UCI race, it means that the computer would actually then count towards the overall weight of the bike. Now, while the body of the Rome has remained the same, another thing which has stayed the same is the screen size. It's still 2.7 inches, and it does still have an incredibly fat bezel. It's one thing which I would have loved to have seen Wahoo move on from and actually increase that screen size a little bit. I think that would have been something that would have been very welcome. You do still have the LEDs that run up the side and across the top. Now, Wahoo users absolutely love those LEDs, and I do too. I think they're brilliant. But even along the bottom and then up the side where you've got the Wahoo logo, obviously, essentially it's completely wasted space as it were so I think that's one area in which the Wahoo could have maybe gone a little bit further is by increasing that screen size because when you do compare it to the like for like Garmin so the 830 at the moment it does look a lot sleeker now while the Garmin's may have a smaller bezel and kind of maximize that screen space one thing that I've always struggled with with the Garmin's is their gloss screens. Wahoo have maintained their matte finish. And I find that really useful because out in the sunlight and when you've got trees above you, it's still much easier to see what the display is showing. Whereas on the Garmin's, I find they're just too reflective. So I think that does work in Wahoo's favor. Just very quickly on the weight of the unit, and essentially it's exactly the same as the previous model. So you're around about 95 grams for just the computer, and then you're about 140 grams for the computer plus the mount. Briefly on the buttons then, it's basically the same as all their previous computers. You've got the two super zoom buttons on the side, you've got the three controls at the bottom there, and then you've got the power button, which also doubles as the menu button. Another addition that the computer features is the inclusion of a 64 color screen. Now that is an update from the previous eight, and they've tried to use color in a way that draws the eye to the information that's most relevant. And again, in the setup of the computer, you can control that. So 
whether you want your heart rate zones to be color coded or your power zones, it makes it a lot easier to see the information that's important to you. Another interesting way that Wahoo have utilized color in the Wahoo is obviously within the mapping. Now, being the Rome, it is for people that want to take on those big adventures. So they've used color just to show different areas so you can locate yourself a little bit easier, but they haven't overdone it. And within the mapping, they've still maintained their same use of chevrons to show the direction of travel. Now that's something that I find really useful over and above how Garmin uses their mapping because they use colored lines and sometimes they kind of blend in a bit too much and it can be hard to see where you're supposed to go. But where Wahoo use the chevrons, it's really clear. Even if you've got sunglasses on, you can look down and actually you can see exactly where you're supposed to go. And with the use of colors, it only further enhances the mapping experience. Now, one thing people absolutely love about Wahoo, myself included, is how easy they are to set up. They are by far and away much easier to set up than a Garmin. And actually, you can get one of these out of the box and be up and running within about five minutes or so. So when you first turn on the Element Roam, you can open up the Element app on your smartphone and then you'll be greeted with a QR code on the device itself. So you scan the QR code, it will find it on the smartphone app, and then there you go, it pairs, job done. Now, the thing that I do really like is you can now copy across your previous settings. So if you've had a Wahoo computer in the past, you can copy all your settings across and it's basically ready to go. If this is your first Wahoo computer, then you just simply head across into the settings on your smartphone in the app, and then you can choose the data screens that are important to you. You can prioritize them. And then using the super view function, you can either have a maximum of 11 different data fields, which is actually quite a lot, all the way down to one. Now, within the smartphone app, you can order all of those different metrics in order of priority. So as you zoom out and you get all 11 data fields, you can see absolutely everything. But as you zoom in, obviously, you will then be left with the most important metrics. Now onto sensors and they are really easy to pair. You just do it through the smartphone app. Again, I do like the use of the app because it makes it much easier and it makes the menus a whole lot clearer to use. And of course the Wahoo is compatible with all Bluetooth and Amplus sensors. Now, when it comes to adding routes onto the computer, again, it's really simple to do via the smartphone app. If you've got something on Strava or you've got it on Komoot or you've just got the GPX file on your phone, it is really easy to share it to the Wahoo Element app, which means it will then bounce straight across onto the head unit. Now, along with all of those updates to the hardware, like I mentioned, the software did also see some pretty cool updates too. Now, Garmin users, you may be familiar with Climb Pro. Well, Wahoo have come out with their own version called Summit Segments. From what I can tell, it works in basically exactly the same way. And now that they've got their new color screen, they can now utilize all those different colors to really highlight the hardest parts of a climb. I'm yet to explore how this is gonna work in the real world and if it will be any different, as in better or worse, than Climb Pro, but it's nice to see the inclusion. And it's nice that I think you can have it down at the bottom of the screen while still seeing all of your key data metrics. One thing which was a bit of a bugbear for previous Rome users was the memory. It had a pretty measly four gigabytes. However, the new unit has been pumped all the way up to 32 gigabytes, and that has been jam-packed full of mapping. So basically, you can take this computer anywhere in the world and you should be covered with maps. The only thing which I did notice is when you go through into the menu on it and you look at how much memory is available, there's only one gigabyte left of that 32 gigabytes. So while it's not much, and obviously they have absolutely rammed that computer full of mapping, hopefully that one gigabyte will be enough for you know planned workouts, courses, and previous rides. But again, it'll be interesting to see how quickly that fills up. The previous Rome had 17 hours of battery life, and this one, it's got exactly the same. 
I think this is a little bit of a letdown, to be honest, especially when you look at what Garmin's doing and the inclusion of their brand new solar tech. I think Wahoo could have a little bit of a problem on their hands in the coming years, especially when you've got a massive bezel, which could be utilized for solar panels. That being said though, 17 hours is still a fair amount of ride time. And I think for most of us with full-time jobs who ride on the weekends and maybe a few rides during the week, that 17 hours should last you for at least a week's worth of riding. So it's not all bad news. Another feature which Wahoo have built into the Element Roam is their public route sharing. Now, I think it's a pretty small feature, but I think it will be handy in some very small cases where if you maybe arrived to a sportive or you met up to the group ride and you just wanted to get the route onto your computer as fast as possible, but maybe you didn't have it on any of your platforms, it's now easier than ever for it to be beamed across straight to your unit via, again, the smartphone app. Now, another software integration that has been made for the Element Roam is that this computer is now compatible and will talk to the Super Sapiens software. So if that's a sensor that you use, then you can now monitor your glucose levels by this computer. One final major update that this new Element Roam has seen is the inclusion of dual band GPS. So whether you're really far out into the wild or you're just in a really built up, dense urban environment, that GPS lock is gonna be a whole lot better than it was on the Element Roam. In terms of the satellites that this can utilize, it's all the major ones. So you've got GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and the Wahoo itself will decide which is the best one to use no matter where you are in the world. On Garmin's, you can select which one you'd want to use, but actually, I think for most people, it's best probably just to let the computer make that decision for you. But I think this is actually quite a good upgrade because I know that previously, sometimes, especially when I was riding in an urban environment, it was a little bit vague, and I'm hoping that that will make a big difference to the GPS lock on this new Element Roam. So on to my final verdict. What do I really think of this brand new offering from Wahoo? There's a lot to like. And I think for me, the dual band GPS, I do like that. I like the upgrade to USB-C. Arguably, that was overdue and should have been on the previous version. I think really those raised buttons, they make a massive difference. And I think everyone is gonna be really relieved to have those. More color on the screen, I do like that. It does make it a lot easier to read. And again, the way they've integrated the color makes it a lot more natural and it draws your eye to the metrics that are important to you. And having the ability to choose what you want in color makes it a whole lot more versatile. Another thing that I really like, Summit Segments. I really like that because it allows me to pace those efforts. I really liked it on Garmin with Climb Pro. So having it in Wahoo, I think again, just make sure that they're still competing at that top level with the functionality that we all want to see from a top end computer. The 32 gigabytes, again, really nice. Although you've only got one gigabyte left, it does mean that essentially you can take this anywhere in the world and you're gonna have mapping. I think that's great. The last thing that I do really like about the Wahoos, which hasn't changed across any of them, but it's just that matte screen. I really, really do like it over and above a gloss finish and I find that really useful. Another thing that I do really like with the Wahoo, and again, this is something they are renowned for, is that really easy setup. I find that it's just so, so user friendly. And I think for those people out there that do just want to get their computer and ride with it and have a really interaction with it throughout their product ownership, I think that's where Wahoo is unmatched compared to any other computer. It's just so easy. So those are the things that I do like. On to the things that I'm not the biggest fan of. Well, first up, it's gonna be that battery life. I was pretty disappointed to see that they'd stuck at that 17 hours. It would have been nice to see an extra bit of battery capacity or maybe even some sort of solar tech. Maybe that's gonna come in the future. I think the Garmin are gonna force them into needing to expand their battery lives. That remains to be seen, really. 17 hours will still be enough for normal people for a week of riding. But yeah, it was a shame not to see it increased just a little bit. Next up is that screen size, 2.7 inches. I do wish it was a little bit bigger, especially when you've got such a fat bezel that runs around the edge of it. It leaves it feeling a little bit clunky and actually for a computer which is made for big adventures and big exploration, having a bigger map, having a bigger screen would only ever be a useful thing. And it was a shame that they didn't take the opportunity to increase it, even if it was just down into that bottom corner. Lastly, 
It's probably the design of the thing. While I do like the design, when you compare it to other comparable Garmin models, it does still feel just a little bit clunky. It's not quite as refined or sleek for something which is priced at a premium level. But otherwise, for me, I think those negatives are still massively outweighed by the positives of this computer. And I think it has made a significant jump on from the previous model. And I won't stop talking about it, but those buttons are awesome. I absolutely love the fact that they are now much easier to press. Price-wise, here in the UK, it's going to cost £349. Over in the States, it will be £399.99. And the same again out in Europe. So there we have it, that's the brand new Wahoo Element Roam. Do let me know down in the comments what you like the look of, or maybe what you don't like the look of. If you enjoyed the video, drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I'll see you again very soon. Now on to... <laughs> that was a save. <laughs>